Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to the PHNX Rising Post Game Show, brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app. If you guys, if you guys haven't downloaded that app, make sure to download it right away. And if and when you do, uh, make sure to let us know because we we've been telling you basically every show. <laughs> anyway, uh, Owen, how you doing, sir? Coming straight from Louisville, live from Louisville. Yeah, it's the second game in a row, away game now, where it's a little bit sticky after the game. Um, I mean, just had to go down pitch side, obviously, do some interviews. Please tell me there's AC where you're at. There is, there is. I'm indoors at the moment. Okay. So, yes, nice, don't worry. Nice. There's, there's air conditioning here. <laughs> nice, nice. I know there's like this huge heat wave going on, so I could I could imagine how that 100-degree humidity weather was over there. Not not a good look over there, but we'll see. Um, Owen, 0-0 zero, zero, uh, today. Not, not a loss, so I'm kind of trying not to be somber today. I don't know if you want to keep it that way for most of the show, at least. Uh, but Rising is able to get a point. Um, not the win that I hoped and I and I thought they would be able to get today by the way, you know, some plays developed. I, I thought Rising could have done a lot better in, in some of those, but we'll talk about that in, in a minute. But um, you were able to, to speak to Rick today after the after the game? Indeed, yeah. So I was able to speak to Rick. I was also able to speak to Jerry Farrell, unfortunately, in the scramble doing things now. It seems to be a bit of an audio problem with the Farrell clip. So at the moment, we'll just go off the Rick stuff. But should we kick in by just getting his first reaction to the results tonight? Let's do it. All right, so point in the game here against the top team in the East. Happy with the result? Very happy with the result. I'm most impressed with the fact that it took the whole team to fight and battle. Um... We didn't really expect to do three subs at halftime, but uh, going into the match, the idea was uh, to push Lamine and to push Richie and, and Greg as far as we could, and we thought that Santi and, and Claudio and Marcus could come in and get us a goal against the tired back four, and uh, man, you know, if we put that one away early in the second half, maybe we walk out of here with three points, but I'm so proud of them. You know, Musa, that's the res re response that I've expected from him. Uh, Kevin Lambert, is a warrior. Uh, Joey Farrell's a warrior. And listen, um, when we're when we're up against the wall, these guys, you know, they, they've responded. And uh, for anybody that thinks that that this team is not together, today's a good response to that. And and we're uh, listen. Sometimes it's baby steps, and we're going to keep going. I agree with a lot of what he said. What do you think? I feel as though it's one of those results that is satisfying to look at in isolation um and i'll you know I, i'll admit that look it's a good very very good result to come away to mm -hmm. louisville pick up a point the problem that you've got here is that right now rising is really needing more than just single points in these games and so again you know it, it's a good result but it does continue to increase pressure further down the line when you've mm -hmm. got other other games, especially now they're coming thick and fast. And yes, it was humid here. Of course, that definitely plays a big role in just how many players were going down with various injuries. But even then, you know, when you saw the issue with, um, with James Musa, you saw the issue with, you know, other players, uh, Kev Lambert went down feeling like it was his, something to do with his, you know, where he's been struggling with his hamstring before earlier this season. Um, it's a little bit concerning when you've got so many games in such a short space of time. And now realistically, this team is going to have to pick up probably in the range of six to seven points out of the next three games. You'd have thought to keep mm -hmm. pace. But here's the thing. And I, and I understand that point of view as well, but I, we, uh, the majority of us, at least here at PHNX rising, we're kind of saying, Hey, rising's going to lose pretty badly today. So for them to come out, with one point today, and I'm going to disagree with a lot of the chat right now, so feel free to let me know how you're feeling. But going into Louisville City, playing in that environment, 100 degrees, humid, dealing with injuries, uh, Rick was talking about how they were going to push the front three as far as they could, and that's why the change happened at halftime uh, due to them getting tired. But it, to me, it's an it's an okay result. Yes, there you know if they would have come away with the victory, even better. But I feel getting one point is is okay. Now you head into come you come back home. You get a, you get a chance to face a Sacramento team that's higher up the the standings uh, than Rising is. And if they they're able to get those three points at home, they're a lot closer to the those last remaining few uh, playoff spots. So I don't think this is a, a bad result whatsoever. I honestly feel a lot better about the team and the way that they play today more cohesively. Uh, they, they, 
they were fighting, you know, like how he was saying a, a little bit more of that warrior mentality. And yes, I know you're making a face, but I, 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 like I mean, yeah, it's we've got to, we've got to say it was backs to the wall. That last 20 minutes was sheer complete backs yeah. to the wall is what it was. Yeah. And when Phoenix mm-hmm. Rising did get individual chances, they all felt like they were half effort to be perfectly yeah. frank. Yeah. Um, you did mention the, the front three in there. Should we take a listen to some of the reasoning behind that front three? Go for it. So then those front three that you did start, what was the specific thing, I guess, behind them starting today? They earned it. They win it in training. Lamine's been fantastic. You know, he comes into games, he's been beating players. Look at how quick he is. He uh, almost got the goal on the, on the toe poke in the first half. He beat his man three or four times. Uh, Richie, you know, what a strike. I mean, a great save by the goalkeeper. It could be 2-0 at halftime. Now, granted, they had some opportunities, but I didn't think it was... I thought we the, the back four, the midfield, they really committed to the defending. We defended crosses very well. It's been a while since I've seen that, and I'm just so proud of them. That, that's what my expectations are. So you said you weren't originally planning on making the free changes at half. About 60-65. You know, I knew they were going to come off. Uh, we didn't know we would do three, but I just had a feeling, and... Uh, man, you know, it, it almost worked perfectly. So I, I will say as well on this, sorry for those videos there. The lighting behind it is... <laughs> we can see a little bit behind you. Yeah, there's, yeah. No, there's no real... I mean, you, yeah, you can see it behind me even here now where it's kind of coming down on my face. It's it's a very weird one. Look, I, I feel as though, yeah, at the end of that game, Phoenix Rising were frankly on the ropes. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, and I agree. I agree, especially those last few minutes of the game that those 30 minutes of uh, added time that the, that the referee gave. Um, well, I understand it. We can all we can sit here and laugh and go, how can you add so long? But when you add everything up, there was a lot of time that, yeah. that really, right. you know, a lot of time that people spent on the ground. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not, look, obviously the home fans absolutely detest it. They feel as though it's some kind of gamesmanship. It's not, okay? Especially when you've got mm-hmm. a lot of these players who really do have a track record this season of having injuries and you know being out for multiple weeks because of those injuries. Mm-hmm. You know, th- these guys weren't making this up, but it does need a lot of time added on at the end of the game, as painful as that can be. Um, I feel as though, as well, to suggest that the, they all, it almost worked in the second half maybe but there were also a lot of opportunities that they really left begging um mm-hmm. i i know that we were talking between the two of us at the one point with marcus epps of course there was one opportunity that really really sticks out whereby it's late in the game louisville make a terrible mistake and mm-hmm. all of a sudden marcus epps has the ball with nobody between him and the goal and he seems to just kind of amble along and look understand the conditions are bad but again these are professional athletes who haven't played for a week and a half, who, you know, he, he, in this case, did not start the first half. So he's played about 45 minutes by that time. Yeah. You've got to just show that little bit more. Um, Claudio's finishing wasn't quite there. Uh, but then again, no one's finishing was quite there, right? Let, yeah. let's, let's be honest on that one. So... No, I felt the first group played a lot more cohesively. Uh, obviously, having Quinn in the field helps a lot as well. Uh, but I really liked Hurst on the right wing. I felt getting him involved in the offense, and I and I tweeted about it uh, as well that he felt you know a lot more freer than just being confined to being you know that center uh, nine role and getting involved in the play. You know, uh, connecting with the midfielders. I felt that that first half the. The front, the front three that started the game were a lot better than the, the second half group. Don't get me started on Santi Moore. That's one of the things that really irked me. Coming into the game, you're, you know, you, the way that Rick explained it, it's like, hey, they're going against a tired back four. Go ahead and take those chances. Santi had a couple of opportunities at the beginning of the second half where he passed it off. Instead of ripping those shots at target, this, this was the opportunity that, you know, uh, kind of frustrates me with rising and I think it just sums up the entire season where the opportunities are there they continue to make the same mistakes and they're not clinical in front of goal and they're letting points slip by so that's one of the parts that really did frustrate me see there's multiple parts there I've got it I said because I've got multiple rebuttals to parts of that mm-hmm. first of all you're talking about Greg Hurst one thing you do have to consider he is someone who is really lethal when you get him in a good spot 
with the mm-hmm. ball at his feet. Do you know how many, how long it took for him to get touches in the penalty area? It was pretty much at the end of that half. He did mm-hmm. not get touches in the penalty area. So while he might be able to do different things that he doesn't normally do in a game when you're playing him as that target nine, you are also taking away something that is his biggest strength, yeah, i.e. his finishing. And so when you consider it that way, Mm. It, it's, a, it's an awkward trade-off and mm-hmm. it's something that maybe has to happen if Rick is going to continue to play with this system uh, because the way that we're seeing it, we're not seeing him really able to play as effectively in that number nine role as a lone kind of target. Well, he's not a target nine, is he? That's, that's no. the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, to the other point there where you're talking about Santi, I feel as though that's a little bit harsh because there were some opportunities there whereby you could say, okay, maybe he should have taken the shot. But at least one of them that comes to mind, he squares across for Claudio Repetto and Repetto has a sitter and he completely fluffs it. And I think that to mm. kind of turn to Santi there and say, why didn't you take the shot on? If he'd have missed that shot, we'd have said the exact same thing in reverse. We'd have been saying, why don't you pass the ball there? He's in a yeah. much better position than you. So he did. He passed the ball. He mm-hmm. gets it across to someone in a better position than him. It's Claudio there who messes that one up. I think that that would be unfair to put the blame for that one, at least, on Santi Mar. Yeah, no, and I agree. Uh, you know, I wouldn't put it squarely on him. The angle of how the broadcast was, it seemed to me that Repetto was offside when uh, San- Santi uh, gave that pass. So that's why I was a little bit more... Uh, harsh, I guess, on Santi for not taking that shot. And, and yeah, it's just, I think it's a confidence thing with him. And, and, you know, you put him in the game, he has these opportunities. And I think just because of the lack of goal scoring this year, it's not there that, that, you know, Santi that we had last year is not there anymore. And there's something that has to be done to kind of getting up to speed. But um, I, I just want your opinion on this before we move on. Uh, Lama Jane, I felt he played okay. He had the opportunity in the but first again, half. Again, here's the point. This is right. You, he gets an opportunity. You are correct. He gets an mm. opportunity. But what does he do? He takes a shot straight at the goalkeeper. Now, in some cases, you can forgive this, right? It, it's yeah. The problem here is that we've got a guy who was never, ever in his professional career had a track record of scoring goals. He has mm-hmm. never had a track record of being clinical with a ball of his feet in front of the goal. So yeah. why do we kind of forgive that now as something that, as though it's just like, oh, I guess this happens. Oh, you know, it. you'll mm-hmm. get some eventually. When when you look at it long term, he never really has. And that's where the problem is right now. Rising aren't, you know, it's not just chance creation that's not there. It's that the goals mm-hmm. aren't there always. They're, they're not as clinical as they used to be. That's why when you look at those numbers, you look at the number of shots that they're taking and they're up near the top of the league and you look at the number of goals they're scoring and they're not yeah. up at the top of the league. And yeah. so bringing someone else in who may be okay at creating chances, but he's not clinical. He's not clinical in any way. We haven't seen anything to suggest. He's still, if I'm not mistaken, yet to score a goal in this league. Mm-hmm. He didn't score one when he was with Atlanta United too. He hasn't scored one since arriving at Phoenix Rising. So he's 27. He's never scored at this level. And so I guess just to sit here and say it's as though the goal's going to come, the goal's going to come, it, it, I don't think that there's enough to suggest that it will. Now, yeah. again, maybe this is a sign we'd look at differently if Phoenix Rising were in a different position. But right now, yeah, I don't think that he necessarily is the answer to the problem, at least. No, no, no. No, definitely, for sure. Um, let's look at the numbers of the game uh, today. Uh, we'll talk about the king of the game a little bit later on, which is, uh, I think, most of you will already have that, but let's look at the numbers. Of course, no goals today. It was a tight game, uh, even though the possession doesn't say that. I felt at times Rising was the, the better group, uh, the better side, building out of the back, uh, being a little bit more dangerous in the final third. So uh, but I think possession may be a little bit of a liar there. But um, Louisville with 15 shots on target, 11 for Phoenix, uh, total shots, I mean, for Louisville, 11 for Rising, six shots on target for Louisville, four for Rising. And then six corners for Louisville and five for Rising. So kind of the numbers that we typically see, I guess, when, you know, from Rising, not keeping a lot of the possession. I felt like at times, you know, and we've seen this throughout the entire season, that it kind of seemed like the defense was on the brink of kind of breaking down and letting in a goal, especially in the last 20 minutes of the game. And that's when I got really worried. But Rick did make a good point that I felt like in in defending uh, crosses in the box and corners, they were a lot better this game. How did you see it from from where you were at? 
I mean, you can argue that on the one way. You can argue also that they typically struggled, even when they did perhaps win that first header, they weren't clearing their lines very well very often. They weren't clearing it far up there to, uh, you know, they, they, <laughs> that's the problem. They just weren't seeming to, it gets to the edge of the penalty area and a Louisville City player will be there and the Louisville City player picks it up and maybe they do something, maybe they don't. But mm-hmm. it, it, I mean, there was one moment in particular where I just remember Darnell King heading the ball back across his own goal. And I think everybody in the press box here were just like, don't they teach you not to do that when you're 12? Yeah, like You don't you don't clear it across your own goal. So yes, they're winning the first headers. That's good. It's a good improvement. It's a great start. But the problem is then you need to start working about how do we transition out of that? We haven't just won the header. We're going to then use that to springboard either into pinning them all the way back and making them kind of restart the attack from a, a reasonable distance, okay? Mm. I say all the way back, obviously I'm not saying go up to the other goal line. Um, <laughs> but Or you've got to work out how you're going to turn that into possession of your own. And that's something where there were moments at least where the first head is won and it's just nervy. It's nervy. Yeah, no, for sure. And there, there are some occasions where I'm, I'm literally like screaming at my TV to bring the ball down and look for the open man so that way you can transition out of your uh, your back third. Because when you're in that position and the ball just pinging around, it could just land anywhere. And that's when Rising get into trouble, when they're not able to control the ball, uh, play the ball um, with each other and move out of the their back third. So that, that was something that was, that was kind of worrying me, but um, good thing that it happened today. Um, all right, Owen, let's take a quick break and talk about our friends at OG's Brands. Uh, quick transition here. Uh, if you guys haven't yet, make sure to check out OG's at their website, ogsbrands.com. They just launched their first ever limited edition se- seasonal flavor with pina colada, a perfect pineapple, and creamy coconut blend that you guys can enjoy. You guys can actually order it right now. And again, that's the website that you could do so at is ogsbrands.com. And on Instagram, you guys can follow them if you have Instagram at, at ogsbrands. Uh, on there you can also find their products at your local dispensary and again just a reminder that you must be 21 years or older to purchase ogs and again check them out at ogsbrands.com to purchase their products all right owen should we talk about the uh the king of the game sure let's go ahead all right let's do it so i don't think anyone would have any arguments against this one benjamin maximilian lunt I, I just really like that that middle name that's like you saying it but uh yeah you keep saying to- it you do keep calling him that yes <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you would like it, but yeah, Ben Lunt, he's the DraftKings king of the game today. He had six saves, 42 touches, one clearance, and uh, had 12 out of 30 accurate passes. So that doesn't tell the whole story. Those six saves, you know, two of them in the final minutes that were key in keeping the score the way it was and keeping rising in the game. So uh, how did you see uh, Ben Lunt's performance today? I think he put it in a blinder. Um, he typically does. Uh, I, I know I asked about this in in yesterday i was about to say midweek it is midweek um i asked about this yesterday whereby you typically see a, a case whereby sometimes his body language doesn't portray a particularly good uh level of confidence maybe that especially when he concedes goals but what you do see is that he's definitely not deserving to be that unconfident because he's putting in some very good shifts week after week now the other thing to note here is that you'll note that louisville's uh man of the match was also their goalkeeper. So mm. it was one of those kind of games. Yeah. So, mm, but hey, Ben, he did put in a good shift, definitely kept rising in this. There were a couple of saves that he made were really critical late in the game. So very well deserved. Yeah, no. And and I think we, we have said that already a few times this season where lunch is literally is giving rising points and keeping them alive, uh, you know, in, in, alive as far as like maybe getting a playoff spot because especially the the one game that comes into mind and we talked about this before is the san antonio game where he basically played the game of his life we see him make key saves again tonight against louisville so and and we've said this before again that when you're when your goalkeeper is your best player that's probably a sign that something is wrong and so you know but we do appreciate Lunt and and his commitment and his dedication of keeping rising afloat basically at this stage of the season for sure, for sure. All right, all right, Owen. So let's transition a little bit. So looking forward, Sacramento's coming into town on Saturday. Uh, do you feel good heading into that game uh, after this result tonight? Not necessarily. Um, I think that 
one thing you have to remember here is that coming into this game, Louisville had all the pressure, really. Um, it was a big game at home. The conditions also weren't great. Um, it was very, very sticky and hot. Um, and look, yes, it'll be hot in Phoenix, but it, it is a different kind of heat. Um, I feel as though there is more pressure on rising on Saturday to get a result than there was today. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel as though you know a draw against Sacramento at home will be something that we could celebrate in the way that you can celebrate a draw away to Louisville. So especially when, look, let, let's put this into the context here. It's now what, two points out of possible 21 last seven games mm-hmm. can you make it three out of 24 yeah i i feel no. as though there is a point where this kind of has to come to an end there has to be a win and while today maybe they get a pass just because of the caliber of the opposition once you come home i definitely don't think that you can get a pass yeah no that i was reading a, a twitter thread where it's that time where you kind of start making you know, doing math. It's like, okay, how many rising has this many available points remaining in the season? They need to win at least 40% of them in order to be able to even think about the seventh spot in, in, uh, in the Western conference. So, and that's not the position that rising wants to be in. They want to continue to earn points, especially at home. I think the Sacramento game, you know, if they play the win that they play tonight, you know, showing that effort, defensively they just need to be critical in front of goals like literally there was a stat on on the broadcast where you know the the big difference between louisville and rising is that louisville actually scores when they're in front of goal they're they're, they're around 20 percent converting uh, not tonight apparently i felt that they left some real chances begging tonight Mm -hmm. and then on the other hand you have rising which is at 13 percent, if i remember correctly and that's bottom you know five in the league and that's not going to get you to the playoffs so it's 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 something that they need to work on, and it needs to show up at Well Horse Pass in uh, on Saturday. Indeed. So, look, I, I think though this one other thing there, I will say, there were moments where, and possibly it's the heat. It, it was there were times when Louisville, it felt as though they were kind of slicing apart Rising's defense reasonably adeptly and then they were just trying to do too much at times maybe Mm -hmm. and there was either a mishit pass or a just a kind of stumble at some point that would give rising the opportunity to get back in or they're trying to do i I know there was at least once or twice i'm looking at they're trying to do some kind of fancy step over nonsense and they lose the ball and it's (laughs) sometimes it's just do the simple things right everyone Mm -hmm. don't get me wrong it's great to watch people doing everything skillful but sometimes you've got to do what you can to get the ball in the back of the net and it's mm-hmm. it's not making yourself look good by doing that stuff but i yeah i mean it, it was better for spells of that game but i mm-hmm. i feel that overall though even by the end it was backs to the wall and yeah it's a bit different it feels a bit different to take a backs to the wall performance at the end and kind of compare it to what you would see at any other stage of play. Because by that point, I think that rising and even it's forward seemed exhausted and weren't necessarily going as far forward. Now I know at least there was some definite shouts from people down by me of a uh, rising persuasion when Claudio Repetto went down in the penalty area in stoppage time. I haven't, been able to look back at that. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to look back at that. So I'm going to tr- have to trust whatever you have to say on this one, Ramon, but, it, it's, it didn't feel as though there was quite the energy in the attack and it felt like they were kind of sitting back and settling yeah. for the fact that, yes, of course, there were, there were bits of pressing as well, but it, it wasn't as they were trying to play a complete game at that point and trying to be open and trying to mm-hmm. take the game to lose City. They were comparatively sitting back. And so, yeah, backs to the wall, chucking bodies in the way, really Mm -hmm. cramming the penalty area. And because they were winning the first headers when you're cramming the penalty area, that's, you know, it tends to help. Uh, But there was still, even late, there were chances. There was one I remember where I think everyone in the press box just kind of all looked at each other and just said, how did he just hit that straight at Ben Lund? Uh, Because it was, Mm -hmm. I can't remember which player it was from Louisville who took it, but it was, it was what between the penalty spot and the uh, goal area. Yeah. Uh, in terms of oh, okay. the one goal. where yeah, he took his arm out. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And you just feel like it was too way too close for Lunt. Yes, of course it's a great save, but sometimes you have to, it's kind of like a penalty in a way, isn't it? Every penalty save is a great save, but mm-hmm. not all, 
<laughs> sometimes you need that little bit of extra from the uh, the person taking it. And that's what it kind of felt like. It was too close to Lunt. It, it did enable him to kind of make that save mm-hmm. there. So, yeah. But anyway, it's yeah. nil-nil yeah, at least. No. We're not talking yeah. about a loss. It feels like we're, we're still... <laughs> We've got to pick up out the negatives, of course, because there are negatives. There's still a lot of things that need to work on. Um, One thing that Joe Farrell did say after the game to me, and again, unfortunately, uh, the video at the moment, for whatever reason, I've got some kind of problem with it. But he said, tonight felt like a playoff game. It felt like a playoff game between two playoff teams. And that Rising showed today that by coming to Louisville and competing, that they Mm -hmm. are capable of being a playoff team. Now they have to go out and earn it. Yeah, no, that's for sure. Do you think Joe Farrell was that guy that was telling, going around saying that they're going to win this game and then they're going to come back for the final game and, and win the championship at Louisville? Well, some guys are just very positive, very vocal. Okay. Uh, I don't know who said it. Uh, you would have to ask uh, <laughs> Mr. Kerr that question. I do not have any insight as to who it was exactly that said it, besides Got the it. fact that I put on Twitter, as people <laughs> seem to have noticed we, we seem to get told this every week and you know what I'll, I'll speak to kind of the point there where it's do you want people saying that yes uh, of course you want some level of positivity you don't want a group that's just damn beat but then there's kind of a contrasting side to that right and it's the toxic positivity it's sometimes when you just tell if you keep telling yourselves that you're good that you're doing well uh eventually you hit a point that weird noise can you guys hear that is that the elevator? Is that your? I have I no know, idea. Uh, your cue music. <laughs> get out of it. Get out of there. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'm about to be kicked out. Um, no. So there are just times when, if you keep kind of saying, "Oh, well, we can win next week. We can win the week after. We can win the week after." Yes, it's mm-hmm. great to have belief in yourself, but there comes a line. That there's just a point whereby you can't just keep blindly saying it. And moreover, that was kind of what I was getting at, right? It, it's yeah. you can't just. It's nothing, it's nothing new to say Rising have said they're going to win this week. Not many teams will openly say that they're going to lose this week. Um, it's it's rare. It's very rare. Sometimes they do, but it's rare. Uh, yeah. But yes, it, hey, it, it is what it is. Um, no, and I understand the, that point of view as well, that you can't always be positive. You always got to kind of step mm-hmm. back a little bit and, and look at what's going on, not just rely on positivity to get you forward. You need to actually make changes on that um and yeah michael i agree i don't it kind of seemed like he was kind of uh and i'm talking about the fact that uh owen was mentioned on national television during this broadcast by by uh uh devon kerr and uh it kind of seemed like he it was a dig at you but i need to really listen to what was going on but regardless you got you got on national television so that's uh, all right i'm yeah. sure i'm sure we'll find devon out with a bourbon in his hand tonight <laughs> yeah let him know all right owen before we wrap up things up i do want to talk to uh, everybody here tonight about the DraftKings Sportsbook app. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to download it. And when you do, use promo code PHNX to make your first de- uh, make your first deposit and get a risk free bet up to one thousand dollars. So that's promo code PHNX only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Oh, if you'd have gone for a draw today, I believe it was plus four twenty five, wasn't it? Yes. That's what I was just going to say. I was bring it up because mm-hmm. Louisville was favored negative 245 plus 425 for a draw and rising if they got the W uh, for plus 475. So if you went with that draw, you know, we would have made some money tonight. So, yeah, that was uh, and that was kind of weird seeing rising like <laughs> that much of an underdog, you know, but it kind of speaks yeah. to what's going on. I mean, I, I know you were talking about thinking, putting some money on there and. I'm pretty sure I came back with the slightly sarcastic reply of "It's a brand new special. You can put money on Phoenix Rising to win and you can lose that exact same amount of money. So, uh, all right, yeah, all we'll right. see. Okay. All right, Owen, any final thoughts before we wrap, up, uh, wrap it up here? Well, I think, look, as we said, it's one of those games whereby you take it, you take the point. It was tough conditions against a very, very, very good team. The problem is, of course, that in the context of the whole season, it's not ideal. There's still a lot that needs to be done from here. Um, again, it's and we, we've said this many, many times, haven't we? Whereby it's, okay, if this team goes and wins in Loudoun and they win against Vegas and they win at home to Orange County, you turn around and look at this game and go, yeah, all right, a draw's a draw. Great. Like, it's, it's a really good result. The problem is, is that it's all those games where they've lost, where they've just not been up to scratch, that 
it, it's it's left them in a hole now. They're they're mm-hmm. still trying to chase up. I believe the exact wording. What was it that um, Nicholas put out yesterday? Nicholas Murray from USL. Um, I think he'd worked out all the numbers. It was in theory rising had the seventh highest potential points. So mm-hmm. if you worked out what every team, if they won from here till the end of the season was, uh, where they'd end up, then Rising would sit in seventh. So yes, yeah. then you say, okay, all the games in hand kind of allow them to catch up with these other teams. But that still means that there are a lot of teams above you who can who can get in there. And it's, yeah. You know what we haven't done, though? What we haven't done. Oh, looks like, you know, when we got uh, Rob Owen here, actually, giving us a super chat. Thanks for asking the tough questions, Owen, and both of you putting out publicly what we're all feeling. I appreciate that super chat, uh, Rob Owen. Thank you so much for, for helping us out here at PHNX Rising. Um, yes, sir. What were you going to say? I feel like we need to talk about something because I did manage to get an interview in today that we're going to be releasing tomorrow. So uh, we've got a little bit of a teaser for you from that interview that will be put out again in full tomorrow morning. One thing that happened recently, I'm sure you might have been vaguely expecting this one, but obviously a lot of fuss was made over the club not really taking a stance about the overturning of yeah. versus Wade. As an ownership group now looking back on the way that that all played out and the way that it, it kind of is... I guess put a wedge in between some of the fans and the general manager, Bobby, as, as you mentioned. Is there any regret for how that played out? I don't think regret's the right, right word. Look, we, we clearly talked about it. Um, this was one of the few instances where we didn't have consensus. And so we decided not to speak, but we encouraged any of the owners that felt like they wanted to speak on it to go ahead and do so, and, and some did. Um, and... Yeah, that, that was the approach. So, yeah, I sat down for 30 minutes with Bill Krauss. We spoke over a lot of topics. There's a lot of stuff. For, for those of you who don't know Bill, uh, the new governor of Phoenix Rising, he is, uh, we spoke a lot about his background and kind of his experience here at the USL media meetings, his first one. But also, of course, we spoke about a lot of things that have been going on with the club lately in terms of Rick Shantz, in terms of that clip there that you just heard, in terms of, just the direction they're going with the stadium. And yeah, there is quite a lot there. So keep an eye out for that one coming out tomorrow. Uh, did you want to talk about the one that just you just put out yesterday? Because that one was pretty great as well. Indeed, yes. Yeah. So I managed to speak with a fair few people from across the league. Uh, we had Amanda Vandervoort. She's from Tucson, uh, but is the president of USL Super League. I managed to speak with Greg Lallis, who is uh, the brother of someone else that people may or may not know, but he's in, in Greg's <laughs> own right, a, form, a former player himself, and he is the chief marketing officer for USL. And uh, I managed to speak with Sam Doer, who familiar face, I'm sure, to a lot of people in our chat, Rising fans. He's currently the president of FC Tulsa. Did, of course, used to work at Rising. So, yeah, that's also out there. A lot of interesting stuff in there. So if you haven't already, make sure to go give it a listen. You can find it on on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, pretty much anywhere where you usually get your podcasts. You can find us, the PHNX Rising. Uh, I believe we're listed as a PHNX Rising football podcast. But mm-hmm. yes, go go check us out. Go check those episodes out and uh, let me know what you think. Yeah, no, they were great, especially the Sam Dorr part. I really enjoyed what he had to say. And, you know, he, he says that he doesn't, uh, he's pretty outspoken, and he surely was during this interview. So make sure to check it out again in all the streaming sites. So, uh, Owen, thank you so much for uh, for all the reporting that you do. Uh, again, uh, you know, always appreciate you going out there and uh, dealing with the humidity and the heat and all that stuff. So, <laughs> I was appreciate. Rumor that. has it, rumor has it that before my flight back, I may not be done yet. So we'll mm-hmm. see where that goes. Maybe we'll have something Friday. Oh, keep an eye out on that. Um, thank you, everybody that's been on the chat. Uh, uh, again, Rob Owen, thank you so much for the, the super chat. Always appreciate that um, here at the PHNX Rising Show. Uh, we got Pat, Michael, uh, Scott, Soothing Hands, Renee. Thank you, Durden. I know you were fighting with our, our bot here <laughs> or quote, quote unquote bot. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Albert as well. And then we got Turk over here. We will be back on Friday um with with the preview of the sacramento game so stay tuned with that there has been rumors and, uh, and there was a comment here on the con- on the chat regarding a player 
mostly uh it might be a center back that might be joining rising soon that was said on the on the broadcast of the game so we'll have more information about that on friday well, i don't know if you know anything right now not that i'll quite put out there yet we'll wait and see on that one there you go so tune in on friday if you want more of the details of what's going on with that so we will see you then uh and then of course on um after the game on saturday for our live post game show all right owen uh grab yourself a beer man some some four peaks if you can find it over there i'm not sure that i'll be able to find four peaks unfortunately <laughs> in uh louisville but yeah i'll be back in i'll be back in arizona tomorrow so i'm sure i'll be able to help myself to some four peaks then for sure for sure and scott we will be talking about manuel madrid on friday's show as well so don't don't think that we we haven't forgotten about him. And well, the last super chat here, Scott Mitchell. Great job as always. Scott, thank you so much. Always supporting us here at PHNX Rising. And if you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Twitter, PHNX underscore underscore rising. All right, y'all, I'm ranting. We're going to cut the show. Thank you so much for our producer, Sean, helping us out today. And I hope uh, all of you have a great rest of your night. Until Friday, take care.